October 24th was technically two hours and 30 minutes ago. On October 24th, something incredible happened. Let me tell you what. October 24th, just like any other day, October 24th, 2020, seemed like, eh, it was just going to be good. A good old Saturday. I knew college football was on. I knew the World Series was just going to be on. And I was like, well, let's just sit back, relax, and, and watch some stuff. It started with the Purdue game. I was also watching the IU game. Purdue's going against Iowa. IU's going against Penn State. Purdue, off to a rough start, but kind of they were kind of trailing mostly all of the game. And they went on to win 24-20. That's incredible, right? Um, Yeah, final score was 24-20 or 24-21. I don't know, but anyways, Purdue got a win, and it was an upset. That was amazing. Then something even more amazing happened. You see, for about five years, the best football game, college football game I have ever seen was Auburn versus Alabama, 2015 Iron Bowl. The kick six. He kicks a field goal to get them the three-point lead and the win for Alabama. Misses. It's caught in the end zone. Ran all the way back. Touchdown. Auburn wins the game. Huge upset. They beat Bama. And I didn't really think that was going to be topped. It got close to being topped a couple times, but never really close. IU Penn State did something incredible. IU lead leading by 10 after half. It looks really good. But then, all of a sudden, they're only leading by 3 going into the 4th. Then, by a little bit of oopsie-doopsies, they're up by 6, right? It's not too bad. Then a touchdown happens, and it's like, uh-oh, IU, get back. Then Penn State makes a big mistake, gets a touchdown, goes up by 8. A minute and 36 seconds left. And it's like, oh my god, as an IU fan, I've seen it so many times lately. They haven't beaten a top 10 ranked team like Penn State was, who's number 9. They hadn't beaten them since 1987, 33 years. At that time, my dad was 16. How old old am I right now? 16. Crazy, right? Let me keep going. What do they do? Michael Penix. The man who came in for Peyton Ramsey, who I loved. Because, well, Ramsey had to come in for him last year. I loved Peyton Ramsey. He went to Northwestern. Don't know how he did tonight. I, I hope good. I, I like Peyton Ramsey a lot. Penix came in. It's the first time I've ever got to see Penix play. And he didn't have too great of a game. They needed eight points. And what did he do? He trudged down that field. Went in to try to get a quick QB sneak. Oh, there's a timeout called. Wow. 27 seconds. What are they going to do? Score in five seconds. 22 seconds left. He runs in the end zone, right? He runs in the end zone. And now they need to go for two. What does he do? He runs again and gets in. We're a tie ball game. Just kick it off. Let Penn State kneel it. Let's go to overtime. The kicker. For some reason, we're pretty. Sh- I'm pretty sure the special teams go to told him, onside kick it, onside kick it, give it to Penn State at 50-yard line. They line up for a 57-yarder. He kicks it. It's looking good for Penn State. He misses. One of the most incredible things. Now, IU gets it. They need it. They're like, we're going overtime. We're, you know, we're fine with overtime. <gasps> awesome. <gasps> so then, Penn State, they, they get the ball first. Four plays. Four plays. I'm pretty sure. Four or three. They score a touchdown really fast, get an extra point. Indiana doesn't look as easy. It's third and goal, though. Luckily, rolling out, Penix throws a dime to the corner. No, 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 to the, to the right side of the end zone. Touchdown. It's, it's incredible, right? It's like magic. But it ain't over yet. They, they need the extra point. All of a sudden, there's a timeout called. You get one timeout in overtime. Why do you call it timeout? Because he's going to go for it. That's what my gr- grandpa's friend said. Because I'm watching it with him and on this run. I'm like, no way. They go out, they line up for it. Penn State calls a timeout. And I'm like, okay, maybe then now they'll change to a field goal. He said, no, wh- why? Like, just go out for it. And then my, my, my grandpa who's there says, yeah, I mean, this is good anyways. I, I want the game to get over with, whatever. Michael Penix, rolling out to the side. We all yell, oh my God, there's a hole, there's a hole. Running to the left side, running towards the pylon and he hits it. But uh-oh, they got to go review it. And it's not looking too good. What's going to happen now? 
It looks like it touches the pylon and out of bounds at the same exact time. But earlier in the game, when there wasn't enough reviewable evidence, they gave, they gave Penn State the call. Not looking good. Looking like just another Indiana L against another great team. And it just looks sad for Indiana fans. I mean, obviously Purdue won, but not everybody here is a Purdue and Indiana fan like me. I'm Indiana above Purdue for for you, Grant. Got to tell you that just to make you know that. But I still support both because I got parents and loved ones who like both. Anyways, with that being said, I've been watching IU for so long, and I was like, oh, it's not going to happen. He walks out there to make the call. The ruling on the field stands. Indiana wins the game. I run down this big hallway that, that my grandpa's friend has, right? And I'm like, oh my God. And I'm yelling. And I'm jumping. And I'm super excited. And I hug my grandpa. And I'm like, this is amazing. This is the greatest college football game I've ever watched. And it is. And then we go home and the World Series is on. And I'm like, cool. World Series is on. This has already been the best college football day maybe I've ever seen. Like, it's just been two incredible games. And there's an incredible Rutgers upset against Michigan State. Just all these incredible things that had happened. How could this World Series top it? I mean, down 2-1, I want the Rays to win. Can, can they even win this game? They trade punches back and forth. Rays get a home run, and then the Dodgers get an RBI. Dodgers are up by a little bit. But then, bam, Brandon Lau, three-run home run, puts them up by one. Dodgers don't care. Dodgers go ahead and go up by one. So then the Rays say, screw it. No, we're tying you. And then the Dodgers in the eighth inning go up by one. Bottom of the eighth, the Rays don't score anything. Top of the ninth, it's a, it takes four batters, but, but the Rays get out of it, right? They have a guy on first base. doesn't matter. They get out of it. All this excitement, trading punches back and forth. And, and what I would consider already one of the most hectic days of sports can things really keep going right for me as a fan? I mean, is there ever a break for the little guy? Do you ever get everything that you want in a certain day on October 24th? Well, a guy named, oh, I can't remember his name. But that's the type of guy he is, right? Comes up after a Rosa Reina who, 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 who me and my grandpa wanted to hit a home run. Just get the game over with, right? Hit a home run. He's been the most electric, best player in the MLB lately. Doesn't matter. He gets walked. First and second base. Second base, Kevin Kiermaier. The longest tenured Ray. He's been on the team for so long, he deserves this. A Rose of Rain on first. He he freaking deserves this too, right? He um came from Cuba to help his parents. Um, in America, and then he played in the Mexico League, and he's 25-year-old rookie, breaking not even just rookie records, but records, period. He's been incredible. He's at first base. And there's random, n nobody comes up. He's 0 for 2 in the postseason. Hasn't done nothing. Never heard of him in my life. One and two count. I, I, look, over, I look over to my grandpa and say, this man's the biggest bum ever. He's costing the Rays the game. I said the same thing about Brandon Lau earlier, and he had a three-run home run. It's like God is trying to tell me, don't talk trash, especially for teams that you love. And I don't usually do it because Rays aren't really a team I love. It's just a team I'm rooting for. It didn't matter because you know what happened? The man hits it on a one and two against Danny, uh, Danny Jansen or Danny Jansen. I don't know. His last name is Jansen. He's been one of the best closers for years. And this postseason, he's been unstoppable like just getting three people out you got three strikeouts in a row freaking just he's just been incredible right he gets a hit in the in the midfield Kiermaier easily in off of that hit because Kiermaier's fast a Rosa Rain around third the guy bobbles it though so the freaking hitter goes to second whatever you know that might be a distraction who knows they 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 throw it to um Muncie I think, yeah, Max Muncy, and he's the cutoff man, and then he throws to the catcher. Catcher's Will Smith, not the guy from the movies, but um, a different, just Will Smith, the baseball player, the catcher, and he can't catch it. A Rosa Reina dives in, but here's what's crazy. During the replay, you can see something. 
which is so motivational, and this is part of the reason I'm making it so much. None of these guys gave up, but especially Rosarina. Penix obviously ran in and just didn't stop running. He just put the team on his back. He said, Indiana, I'm doing this for you. Purdue, they, they had their defense not stop and said, hey, we're going to be gritty till the very end. Rucker said, screw all this. Hey, we haven't beaten a Big Ten team in a while. So what? We're going to put, we're going to put freaking wherever Rutgers is located on our back. I don't know. Sorry. Right? That's incredible. A Rosa Reina rounding third trips, falls. You can only see this in the replay because you don't see it live. You're like, he's, he falls. You know why it's about to make me cry? Because that's why I love sports. My man falls. And that explains what's been happening with him. He goes from Cuba to help his mom. Then plays in Mexico. Comes back with, with the with, um, with the Cardinals. Cardinals unsign him. He gets COVID. Now he can't be signed. The Rays sign him. Give him a chance. He, he doesn't have, like, he gets signed in, like, August or something, right? So he gets signed at the end of the season. You know, he's a, he's a nobody. As a rookie. And then all of a sudden, in this postseason, he just explodes. And then in that moment, he looked human. And he hasn't looked human. He's looked like a superhero all postseason. He falls down. He gets back up. Thinks the catcher is about to catch it, so he has to go back to third. Turns around. Sees his basement coach saying, pointing to home. Because Will Smith didn't catch it. He slides home. And boom, boom, boom on the home plate. He felt that. Do you know why he felt that? Because no matter who you are, you can fall down. But no matter what, you can slide. You can slide in. Sometimes it's luck. Sometimes you just get things go your way. But with school coming back for me, and with a lot of y'all in school, and with um, freaking time getting stressful right now, you're probably going to go get jobs. You're going to, um, life's going to get hectic. Just know if you fall down. Get back up and run towards home. You can still win the game. Because until the whistle was blown, or until there's an out called, you can be safe. That's not only motivational, that's real life. Thank you. October 24th, you were the greatest day in sports in my lifetime. Up to this point, at least. Have a good night, guys. See you next time. Yo, yo, Aflac, out.